this has been so incredibly meaningful to me. And I just get all emotional just, uh, just thinking about it. And I mean, a little over a week ago, I wasn't even sure that it was actually gonna happen. And now, I mean, it happened. It was everything I could possibly imagine, but better. This is take one, I guess. I just got a really exciting email and I immediately knew that I want to film this whole journey. So I figured why not start right now. When I first reached out to this organization, I just wanted to basically just say, hey, and I think you guys are doing a great job. Let me know if I can help out in any way. Um, I just got a confirmation email saying that I'm actually gonna be able to join one of their expeditions and learning from amazing people, marine biologists and sailors who have already been exploring the oceans for years and they know exactly what the situation is like. This is the boat that we're going on. I've literally never been on a sailing boat before in my life. This is gonna be the first one I board and it looks like a real life pirate ship. This is Reykjavik right here um, and we're gonna sail around the west fjords. We're going up here to the other side of the country, which is called Husavik. Basically, this is just gonna be the ultimate way for me to learn even more and I can't wait to soak up all their knowledge and to see with my own eyes what we're doing to our oceans and how it's affecting a very remote place, but I'm sure it's still very much affected since this whole world, everything's so hyper-connected. First night at the boat, we're still in the old harbor of Reykjavik. Um, the setting sails in about three and a half hours. Um, very, very, very excited. This is my little cabin. It is super, super cozy. The main mast is right here. Belen said it's like the heart of the boat. I like that. Day number two. So far, so good. It's raining and a little stormy, so we have we had to um, change our course a little bit. It really feels like we're pirates out on open sea or something. Uh, also, I've um, to stay away from seasickness. Forget that last thing I said. The reason why we can say whales here is mainly because they come here to eat. So these areas are like just good feeding grounds for them. And some of them they are living in Icelandic waters, 
uh, or they stay around. They don't really move so much, but some of them they make very large migrations, like the humpback whales and uh, the blue whales. The blue whales. Mm -hmm. We don't need no more, even in the hard times. You and I can weather many storms. This is where we laid anchor for the night. I just woke up and saw how incredibly still and glassy it is. On the, balcony. the plan for today is to keep going along the west fjords. Um, I think they said we're gonna stop at a beach and hopefully do a little beach cleanup. Well, hopefully we don't find that much. Uh, but it's gonna be interesting to see if there's any waste in these super remote areas. That's the famous uh, horn strand deer behind me. Horn strand deer, I think. Uh, we're here at a little beach that's actually nicknamed Driftwood Beach. Uh, because there's a lot of driftwood coming here uh, via the current from Siberia and Finland apparently. We're doing a survey and we've marked up 100 meters uh, on the beach uh, where we're gonna see how much plastic there is and measure it and that way we can get an estimation of how much plastic is on the entire beach. In just 100 meters we have three half-full bags. In the south of Iceland, the puffin colonies have shrunk like massively because of this. Uh, the sand eels, which the puffins are feeding on, are pretty sensitive to changes in the ocean, changes uh, in the temperature. Mm -hmm. And so now many of the puffin colonies in the south of Iceland um, have collapsed almost because they believe that the sand eels didn't like the temperature anymore. So their food moved north probably, uh, but the puffins don't have that instinct, you know, to move. Yeah. on the main mast, looking down at all my friends down there and having this view over the west fjords. Hi, I am back home. It feels kind of surreal. I've been you know, looking forward to this trip and planning for it for so long and then it happened and it was a dream come true. And now I'm back home and I'm like, what now? How do I incorporate everything I learned into my everyday life? I think what it all comes down to is every single individual doing the best we can contributing in any way possible. I mean, it's not that hard. Making small changes to our everyday lives. The time to do something is now. Let's do it. <laughs>